I want to talk about power with God. Power with God. Most important. The scripture says in James 4 verse 2, Ye have not because ye ask not. Power with God is dependent on prayer. And I want to share the word with you today about that amazing life of prayer, why the devil fights you when it comes to prayer. And what must you do to win in this life? Isaiah 59 verse 16, and he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, therefore his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness, it sustained him. What a powerful verse. God looking for someone to pray and found none. Isaiah 64 verse 7. Isaiah 64 verse 7. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself, stirs up himself. That's the problem with a lot of people. They just won't do it. Stirs up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us, You've hid your face from us. You've consumed us because of our iniquities. There's a, a, there's a lot in this verse. It says, first of all, nobody wants to pray. Nobody will stir themselves up to take hold of God. And God has hid himself, hid his face. Well, that's his nature. God hides himself for a good reason. In Isaiah 45, 15, it says, Thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. God hides. Why does he hide? Because when you seek him, the flesh begins to die. God hides in order that the flesh be crucified because the longer you seek him, the less of the flesh remains. And this is one thing Satan will fight you on for the rest of your life. He'll challenge you for the rest of your life. He'll convince you that you are wasting your time praying. But prayer has amazing power if you stay with it, you gotta stay with it, never give up. So you pray for your children, you pray for a son who's on drugs, you pray for a daughter who's doing something she should not do. It may take years before you see the miracle, but if you give up, you will lose them. Never give up. You pray every day. Don't miss one day because the day you miss is the day you lose. You have to pray daily. Stay in contact with God daily. Why daily? Well, because we, we rust. We develop rust in the spirit. So if we don't pray daily, we become uh, rusty. We become, we have difficulty finding God the third and fourth day because we missed a day or two. Continual communion means fast entrance. No warm up sessions with God. So when you talk to him daily, you'll get in there quickly. 
Daily contact means no waiting necessary. If you don't talk to God daily, you'll have to wait longer before God shows up. So daily contact is critical when it comes to power in your life. Trust me, I've experienced all that. So prayer, prayer is the most heavenly and the most spiritual function of your Christian life. I want to say it again. Prayer is the most heavenly and the most spiritual function of the Christian life. That's the key for the Christian life. You cannot take this lightly because prayerlessness brings the demonic. When you don't pray, you open the door to devils. Prayer keeps the door closed so devils cannot get in. But when you don't pray, you, you, you open the door. So prayer is so important because it, it literally can shut Satan out of your life. But yet you, you've got to pray. Because if you don't pray, he comes in. The door opens up by itself, you know, and he comes in and he'll destroy your family. He'll destroy your life because prayerlessness is destructive. Now, I've, been, I've been a Christian since 1972 and I've had to learn this one real hard because, you know, I didn't really realize how powerful the devil is when you're prayerless. When you're prayerful, he is weak. When you're prayerless, he, be, he will become strong. He'll fight you and he'll win if you don't pray. So it's like this. When I don't pray, I empower the devil. When I pray, I empower God and the angelic. Think that the angels become stronger when I pray. It's in the Psalms, Psalm 103. Bless the Lord all ye his angels that excel, excel means strengthen at the sound of his word. Well, who's praying the word? You are. Remember what it says in Revelation 12? They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Well, here's the scene. Angels are fighting the dragon. Michael and God's angels are fighting the devil and his angels. And we the saints are declaring the power of the blood. And as we declare, the angels win. What was happening with Moses? Remember Moses? When, he, when they fought Amalek, as he held his hands up, victory came. When his hands went down, defeat came. Meaning what? When he was praying, he strengthened the spirit's world. He empowered the angels of heaven. People don't realize that prayer empowers angels. Angels excel at the sound of God's voice. But God's voice is heard through the church. Are you learning anything? Well, I'll, I'll tell you more. So, now, as a believer, as a Christian, um, the life of Jesus, the life of Jesus, will be poured inside of you um, according to your prayer life. So the more prayer, the more life of Jesus. So the life of Jesus is poured into you according to the amount of time you spend in prayer. The less time, the less life. The more time, the more life of Jesus. So the life of Jesus becomes mine 
in measures or in time or according to the time I give to the Lord. So when I give him an hour, he pours more life in me. When I give him five minutes, he is not able to give me his life. He, he, he may give me a very little bit of it. So the life of Jesus is dependent on the time I spend with him. So he gives me his life according to the time I surrender to him in prayer. So prayer, literally, the more I pray, the more life of Jesus. The less I pray, the less life of Jesus. Now that's what the Bible teaches. And, 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 prayer, every time I pray, I breathe in God and I breathe me out. Every time I pray, I inhale heaven and I exhale the flesh. Every time I pray, I inhale the Holy Spirit and I exhale the flesh. So prayer is so important because every time I pray, I take in heaven and I blow out earth. I take in God and I exhale myself. Are you people listening? See, I want you, I want you to pray because I have been living this life for many years. I've been in the ministry many years and I've seen the power of what I'm talking to you about. It really is reality. This is reality. And today very few uh, pastors talk about uh, the power of prayer. They, they give little sermonettes and they send people home. And, and most people are desperate to be free, you know, from the flesh and the devils out there. Well, how can you be free from the flesh if you don't know how to pray? Or if you don't pray? Or no, nobody's even telling you how to pray. So when they came to Jesus, they said, teach us to pray. Because they wanted to learn, like, Lord, what does it mean to pray? Well, I'm telling you what the Bible says and what the Lord, I'm sure, told them. That prayer is power. Prayer is life. Prayer is victory against the devil. So every time I pray, I inhale the Holy Spirit. And every time I pray, I exhale the flesh. And, and, every time I pray, the flesh begins to die and wither away. When I pray, the flesh can no longer function like it wants to. So prayer crucifies the flesh. So Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Well, how do you, how do you deny yourself as you pray? Prayer denies the flesh. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and follow me. All that is possible only when I pray. Only when I pray, the flesh is denied, self is denied, and I am given the power to find where Jesus is, and I'm given the power to follow him. Because how can I see where he is unless I'm praying? How can you follow the Lord? How can you follow him? You know, unless you know how to follow. Well, how do you know how? Prayer will show you how. When you pray, it's like your, your, your eyes open. You recognize where Jesus is and what he wants you to do with your life. Then you follow. And he'll become more real than the, than the, than the person sitting next to you on the pew right now. He'll, he'll become so real, you can feel him and taste him. He'll become so real, you'll even know what, what color robe he's got on. He'll be so real, he'll become tangible in your house. People will walk in and say, Jesus is here. 
And when that happens, no devil can get in then. Because the presence of Jesus will keep devils out. And the presence of Jesus will keep sin bound. You know, people cannot overcome sin on their own. It's impossible. You cannot fight sin because you will lose. All you need is the presence of the Lord in your life. So when you make room for the presence of the Lord, there will be no room for sin. Did you hear that? So when you pray, you make room for the Lord. And when you make room for the Lord, Satan and sin will have no space inside of you. So important what I'm saying to you. So the Bible has a lot to say about this. So now in Luke 11, in Luke 11, 13, it says, Jesus said, if you fathers being evil know how to give good gifts, how much more will your heavenly father give, give the Holy Spirit? So God's giving is always connected to prayer. God's giving is connected to prayer because Jesus said, if you being evil give good gifts, how much more will your heavenly father give, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? those who pray. So God's giving is the result of my prayer life. So when the Holy Spirit was given on the day of Pentecost, what, what were they doing? They were praying. Acts 1, 14. So the work, the work of redemption, now this is key. The work of redemption was complete when Jesus died on the cross. The work was complete. And the promise of the Spirit was complete. But the Holy Spirit did not come, even though redemption was complete. Even though Jesus promised the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit was not given till they prayed with intensity. So if God gives you a promise, that it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Till you pray, it happens. Did you hear that? So when God says, I will do it, he waits for you to pray so he can do it. So he doesn't do it till you pray for it to be done. So prayer fulfills the promises of God. Prayer fulfills every promise God gives us. So God promised that the Holy Spirit would come. Jesus paid the price that the Holy Spirit would come. Jesus paid the price for our redemption. So that work was done. Yet the Holy Spirit did not come without the apostles praying for 10 days. 10 days. Now, a lot of people don't even want to pray for, for an hour. They prayed for 10 days. So even though God gave the promise and the job and the work was complete on Calvary, the Holy Spirit could not come without the church intensely praying for 10 days. So God gives you a promise, then he waits to see how intense are you, how much will you pray, how intense will you pray, what will you give for the promise to come your way. You have to pray. Prayer is the price. Prayer is time. Miss Kuman used to always say, God will use anyone if you pay the price. I did not know what the price was. I, I know now. It's prayer. Prayer is the price. Time with God is the price. And nobody wants to pay it because we, we don't have time. People don't have time or they say they don't. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, yes, you do. You just don't want to do it. We all have time. We have time to watch news. We have time to watch silly programs on TV. We have time to
to talk to stupid people on the phone who don't belong to us, who shouldn't even be bothered, you shouldn't be bothered with them. You've got time to speak to family that, that you shouldn't bother with. You have time for everything. Well, can't you give God one hour of that? Of course you can. We all can. Well, I'm tired. Why don't you get up and shower and talk to God? Wake yourself up. Just stir yourself up. So it says in Isaiah, none stirs himself up. Well, you can easily stir yourself up if you want to. Look, look, let me tell you something. The older you get, the more you'll see I'm, I'm giving you the truth. Because you young people, you don't care right now. Say, so everything's going fine. It won't be fine for long. Do it. Do it before it's too late. And people sometimes will not pray, but they'll do crazy stuff. And the reason they do crazy stuff is because they don't pray. They do drugs, they drink, they, they have sex with women or women with men. You got time to do that. And, and the reason you're so messed up is because you don't pray. Think what God can do with your life when you pray. Don't reach heaven and find out how much you miss down here. Are you a Christian or are you just a Christian by name? Christians pray. Non-Christians don't care to pray. So show up. Come on. Be a real Christian and stop praying. Let me hear something. Yeah. Christians pray and non-Christians don't want to pray. So you tell me what, what your life is like when you pray and you tell God what your life is like when you pray. Now, the Bible tells us that uh, even though Jesus said, you shall receive power, that power never came till they prayed hard for it. Hard. In, in Acts 4, they prayed for it again. And then, you see something quite amazing. In the early church, I think it's, well, it was quite amazing. That the Bible says in Acts chapter 6, something actually quite shocking but it's it's true let me let me let me read that in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied there arose a problem murmuring the greek uh, jews had a problem with the local jews because widows were neglected when they gave them food and help. What did the apostles say? They, they called the multitudes and said, it's not reason that we should leave the word and serve tables. It's, 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 it's not our job to neglect prayer and uh, take care of the poor. Because we will give ourselves continually to prayer. Now this is something. They chose prayer ahead of the poor. Prayer was more important than taking care of the poor. While the poor uh, was a high priority in the, in the early church. Ministering to the poor was very important. Yet... They understood that prayer was more important than that. James 1.27, it says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is to visit the fatherless widows in their afflictions. So, pure religion is taking care of the poor. Yet prayer is more important than pure religion. Are you listening? So James 1.27 says, pure religion means you take care of the afflicted and the poor and the widows. And God is pleased with that. But what is he pleased more with? Prayer. 
So they said in Acts 6, we understand we have a problem, but we are not going to neglect prayer to take care of it. You choose people who can take care of it because we will give ourselves to prayer. Wow. Somebody says, I'm too busy helping the poor. God says, no, no, no. Your first business is prayer. Then you take care of the poor. Then ministry. Which means prayer is more important than ministry. Prayer is more important than your life. Or your family. Or your priorities. Or your work. Or your job. It's prayer. Now, the Bible makes it very clear that in Acts chapter 12 and the, and the church, the early church failed in that miserably one day because it was prayerlessness that brought death to James. Why was Herod able to kill James? Because the church stopped praying. Then James was killed, and they all woke up. Oh, dear God, they said, let's get back to prayer so he doesn't kill Peter. And they prayed. So they woke up to the danger of prayerlessness. They woke up. And it was intense, constant prayer that saved Peter in, uh, in, in Acts 12 verse 5. And later it was that same intense prayer that killed Herod. Do you understand that prayer will save the righteous and destroy the sinner? When you pray, God will take care of your enemies. You just have to pray. Seek God. Spend more time with God. Talk to the Lord. Tell him about it. If you have a problem, talk to God. If you're sick, talk to God. You have an enemy, talk to God. You got some lawsuit or whatever, talk to God. And keep talking until he fixes it. God will never be late. Never. He's never, never late. He's just waiting for you to do your job. To release him to do his. You have to pray. There's no way out of it. And there's no different route. Well, you know, this is 2018. We do things different. Really? The Bible has not changed. It's as old-fashioned as it's ever been. God does not change his word because of the world is changing. So what? God doesn't change. His word doesn't change. No detours. Now, where you find prayer, you find the Holy Spirit. And where you find the Holy Spirit, you'll find prayer. So, the more you pray, the more the Holy Ghost is in your life. And the, and the more the Holy Ghost is in your life, the more you pray. It's an amazing connection. Prayer brings the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit produces more prayer. It's like more and more, you know. More prayer, more Holy Spirit, more Holy Spirit, more prayer. So it just keeps going. So our life, our life is dependent, dependent on prayer. Because the, the power of God is released when we pray. And, and... Uh, the kind of prayer that works is intense. Real perseverance. No such thing will come. No power will come. No life of Jesus will come if you, if you pray with half a heart. You have to pray with all your heart. Half-hearted stuff doesn't work doesn't work. You have to seek God with intensity and 
continually and you have to persevere. I have to remind myself to do that all the time because I know how strong the flesh will become if I don't pray with intensity. I know what happens if I weaken. My, my daily prayer, don't let me weaken, Lord. You know what God says to me every time? It's up to you. It's up to you. I used to pray, now Lord, help me pray. And the Lord said, no, I won't. I will not help you to pray. I'll help you as you pray. God doesn't help you to pray. He helps you as you're in it already. As you pray, he'll help you. But because he'll not force you. He'll, he'll only work with you. So we see that perseverance in Luke 11. Remember that woman who came to that wicked judge? You remember that guy who came to his friend, kept knocking on the door? Come on, get up, get up, get up. It's called perseverance. It's the only prayer that pleases God. Is that one that just knocks and knocks and knocks and knocks and knocks. You pound that door till the door opens. Don't give up. Giving up. Only cowards give up. Only those who fail give up. Only the weak will give up. The, the, the strong will never give up. And I'm here to tell you today, don't give up. You're really very close now to your miracle. How many have been praying for something for a long time? Don't give up. Maybe that's why I'm talking about this today. Just don't give up. Get even stronger in prayer now. Pray harder and be more intense in it because you're almost there. I said you're almost there. Hallelujah. So think about, think about God saying to us in Isaiah 62, 6 and 7, these amazing, amazing words. Now, you know, this is God talking. This is not some, some man talking to us. This is the Lord himself. Here's what, what he says. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent. Don't give up. Give him no rest. Wow. Give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. John Arnott and myself back in the 70s, <clears throat> before anybody knew our name, we were in a car here in Islington at a parking lot. It was winter, it was freezing cold. And he's in the car, I'm in the car, I'm 20 years old, somewhere there. He's younger, uh, well, a little older than me, but he's much younger than, than he is now. In the car, not, not far from where we are right now. And a big German Shepherd dog between us. That dog smelled horrible, by the way. And he and I joined hands in his little car and prayed this prayer. This is 70, early 70s. We said, Lord, we will not give you rest till you use us. Well, God is using us now. We will not give you rest till you use us. And when we, when, when we started, John Arnott used to travel with me. He, he used to be my catcher, for goodness sake. Then God used him here with Carol and the big Toronto blessing hit. But it all began in a car when we said to the Lord, we will give you no rest till you use us. And we did it. We gave him no rest. And God loves that. So he says in the word, give me no rest till I establish Jerusalem. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I'm going to give you no rest till you use me. Say it, Lord, I'm going to give you no rest until you use me. 
That's what God wants. Intense perseverance. Hallelujah. Prayer is the only power on earth that commands the power of heaven. It's the only power on earth that commands heaven. Think about that. The greatest power on earth is prayer. More powerful than all the atomic bombs on earth. Did you hear what I said? Prayer has more power than the government in Ottawa. Prayer has more power than the, than the government of the United States. Prayer has more power than the power in Russia or China or Iran or anywhere in the world. There is mighty power when we pray. Catherine Kuhlman was, was asked a question before she died. And uh, this magazine, Christian magazine said, if there's one advice you can give to the church, what is it? She said, no power on earth is greater than the power of God. No power. Nothing greater than the power of God. You have more power when you pray than all the power in hell. You have more power than all the power the devil has. Only when you pray. Say, only when I pray. So you can say, I have more power than, than the devil. No, no, that's not true. You have more power than the, than the devil only when you're on your knees. He has more power than you when you're prayerless. You have more power on him when you're on your knees. Stay on your knees and you'll have power. Get off, you have no power. So the power of our heavenly life, the power of God himself, his very omnipotence is released only in prayer. So this is the kind of prayer that God loves. Effectual, fervent, avails much. That's what God wants. That's what pleases him. That's what he will listen to. So it's perseverance that enables me to partake of God's strength. It's perseverance that crucifies the flesh, not half-hearted stuff, perseverance. It was perseverance in Genesis 18 that changed the mind of God when Abraham kept saying, now what if there's 45, what if there's 40, what if there's 30? It was perseverance, he just won't give up, won't give up. He drew near and said, now Lord, you, you, you're a righteous judge. It's not like you to do all this. That took a lot of guts. That took boldness and perseverance because he kept going back for more. God loved it. How about Moses who tells God, oh no, you can't do that. When God was so angry to destroy Israel, he said, you can't do that. That's what's called perseverance. He began to Literally plead with God for Israel's life. Perseverance. Effectual prayer. Now the Bible tells me that the God we serve loves to hide. Isaiah 45, 15. That he might, that, that we might find him and overcome the flesh. Hallelujah. All right, help me on the instrument there. The Bible says... In Psalm 80, verse 18, quicken me, quicken me, and then I'll call on you. When you persevere, he'll quicken you. When you persevere, he'll draw you. When you persevere, miracles happen. Never forget, effective, fervent perseverance it will avail much. It's only that kind of prayer that will work. And it's time 
to do it. We've wasted too much time with half-hearted stuff that doesn't work anyways. Now it's time to persevere. Hallelujah. Now those of you that want to see your prayer life transformed, get down there and get on your knees. Let's believe God for you. Come on. Then we'll say goodbye and dismiss and come back tonight for more. You that cannot come down, you just get on your knees right where you are there. Right where you're sitting. I'm going to pray for you that God will give you the kind of prayer that will shake heaven. That he will cause hunger to invade your life. Breathe upon me, breath of God. Hallelujah. See, God's people are so hungry for this. Because most people don't even want to talk about that. But it's the fact. That's why we're losing. So many preachers are leaving the ministry. So many people are walking away from God because nobody wants to pray. Look at me, all of you. Look, look for a second. I want to talk to you. Do you know why? Forgive me, but I want to say something. You know why Muslims are winning a lot of people? Because they pray. Even though they they are, they, are, they are not serving the God we serve. They pray five times a day. Think what God will do with you if you pray five times a day. You'll shake the world. They fast during Ramadan. Even though what they're doing is not exactly God's will. And I don't want to get into that stuff. But every time they fast, they empower themselves with the wrong power. Yeah, God, we've got the good stuff. We've got the real stuff. We have the power of God, the real God, the Holy Spirit's power. Hindus, look at the, the way they pray. The only people don't, that don't pray are Christians. Yet we have the real power. They have imitation power. We have the real power. Think what God will do with you if you pray. Now, Daniel prayed three times a day. Father, in the name of Jesus, give them that desire, Lord. Put that desire inside of them to pray continually, to begin praying daily, and then, Lord, Put that desire that they pray three times a day like Daniel did. In the name of Jesus, Father, give them that hunger. Give them that intense hunger. Give them that intense anointing for it. Draw them to yourself. Draw them into your presence. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Do for them what you did for Abraham. Do for them what you did for Moses. Do for them what you did to the saints in Acts 12. You, you gave them such intensity to pray for Peter. Lord, resurrect that righteousness in them. Resurrect that mighty giant of faith in them. In the name of Jesus, let them strengthen the feeble knees. Let them strengthen now. The spirit of, of God in them be strong. Hallelujah. Let their spirit man come alive again in Jesus' name. Let them be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. In Jesus' name, Lord. Raise them up again to become mighty warriors in prayer. They're going to they're, they're see miracles they've never seen before with their families. Miracles they've never seen before with their homes, their loved ones, their future, their job, their business, their body. New power, new anointing in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, they've gotten on their knees because they're serious about this. Give them the unction of the Holy Spirit to seek you with all their hearts. No more half-hearted prayer, Lord. 
No more half-hearted requests. In Jesus' name.